will grow every step of the way. Praise the name of our God. As a matter of fact, the devil had counted you out. Paul said we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Bishop Robert Clarence Lawson, founder of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith Incorporated. The following contains a little more information on the establishmentarian of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. Bishop Bonner interviews Sister Minnie White, who is one of the charter members of Rehoboth Church in Ohio. Rehoboth was one of Bishop R.C. Lawson's first established edifices. When the church first started, yes, were you there? Yes, I was there when he first came here. When he first came. Yes. When he first came here. And he started on the street corners. We we had no. We opened up a it was a storefront. Mm hmm. And he got in the storefront, and that's where we had the church at. Was uh, Ella Carl Smith saved in that storefront? He was saved on somebody's house. He was going. He was going to a Methodist church, and when he graduated, he was to preach the message. Bishop Lawson taught him what to say. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? The Methodist preachers got so mad, they laid him out and said, "Get out of here and don't you never come back here again." <laughs> <laughs> He took him in the house with him, and, and uh, him and his so he became Bishop Lawson's assistant pastor. He became his assistant pastor, uh -huh. and he was his assistant pastor till oh, it's been pretty ten years. But there's a lot of people that had was living in adultery. They had married again, and he he, he took them in the church, and Bishop Lawson told him, "said No, you can't do it." You got to get out of here. No, no, one husband, one wife, and one husband. And they, he said no. And of course, the people he then took all these people in, and so Bishop Lawson left. Bishop Lawson went, and he there was a lawyer that knew Bishop Lawson, and he said, "Listen here, Lawson, if you turn it over to me, I'll have him out of there in twenty in twelve hours, twenty four hours." The Bible says, "Don't go to law with your brother." I don't care what. The, that's what you ought to let me do, but Bishop Lawson wouldn't let him do it. Mm -hmm. And so, with him and a praying and fasted, and the Lord gave him that scripture, Rehoboth, which makes it, the Lord said, give him another church. It was a, a room in back of the YMCA. A building had been empty for years. Mm -hmm. And he went there and asked him, could he have that for a church? And they told him, yes, you could have for a church. We had coral lamps. Well, they felt sorry for us, and they said, "Oh, you don't want them coral lamps." Said, well, "Get a uh, get a, a cord to reach from here to there, and get yourself some uh, regular lamps." And so that's where we went in this back of the YMCA. Uh, he turned that church over to, and he Ella just Smith. turned it over to Elder Smith. Mm -hmm. He turned it over to Elder Smith. Now, Ella Smith then became a member of what the PAW? Yes. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So Bishop Lawson started a new church. He started a new and church. He called it Rehoboth. He called it Rehoboth. The Lord gave him that scripture. Where at the end he said, the Lord has made, it means room enough. Mm -hmm. The Lord has made room for you. And that's when he turned it. And um, to go back and forward from uh, New York, Rehoboth. Mm -hmm. I got saved before uh, Bishop Lawson started being the pastor. Because mm -hmm. he came, Carl Smith wasn't there either because Carl Smith was a, uh, going to school, the Methodist school, and I can't think of the man that was going to open up a church in um, uh, Cleveland, and that's where he said he was going, and so he uh, he opened up this church in Cleveland, and said, now if you want to stay here, Lawson, you can stay here, but I got to go to Cleveland, because that's where the Lord told me to go. Mm -hmm. Bishop Lawson took charge of uh, Rehoboth. Mm -hmm. He didn't call it Rehoboth at that time. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't called Rehoboth until after Carl, him and Carl Smith. Went, Carl Smith went one way and he went the other way. See? Yes. And he opened up a little church down on Long Street here. But he just opened it up and paid by the month. Well, the folks shouted and carried on so till all the people in the neighborhood signed the thing and put them out. <laughs> so we didn't stay there very long. Because then when he, um, this church we moved at down on Denmead. Just a few people, they were saved, and they had the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. But they, uh, all the folks 
they finally went out of this here place. <laughs> and so Bishop Lawson went to these white people, I can't remember their names, and they asked them would they uh, let him have the church. They said, uh, we'd give it to the people, but we ain't going to give it to you, but we'll rent it to you if you want it. So they rented it to him, and that's where we had church, and uh, um, he opened up this church on Dindy. Yes. Now, did Bishop Lawson split the PAW? He came out of it. He came out of it. Yes, he came out of it. Mm -hmm. But he didn't split it? No. Uh -huh. No. He came out of it, and he called his church the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But he didn't take... Uh, well, of course, the folks that was in the church stayed there. Mm -hmm. And then from here... New York City. Yes. He go, go backward and forward. He mm -hmm. go backward and forward. Uh, he sent for Mother Lawson. Yes. And she came. Yes, and she came. Had he married her at that time? No, he married her. He, when he was taking the, having the street meeting, mm -hmm. he got enough money to buy their license. And he, and, married have, her, and he married her. He sent for her to come here. And he married her in and Columbus? And he married her here in Columbus. He married her right down to the city hall, right down there where to buy the license. Uh-huh. And he had an old skinny dog called Constellation, and he always was crazy about this old dog. And we, that's all during that time when we had a depression. The uh, men would stand on the corner of High Street and sell apples for ten cents a piece. They stand in front of Lazarus and all those places because mm -hmm. they didn't have no money. Mm -hmm. so it was an awful depression. I forget how long it lasted. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, and of course, the bitch was as skinny as he could be. And uh, he did a lot of fasting, and so did she. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, he asked the Lord, don't give him no children. He said, I, I don't care how hard you have me working, but Lord, don't give me no children until I get so I got some money. <laughs> <laughs> said, yeah, Lord, he said he prayed, and Lord he didn't have that none. Time. He heard him too. Heard that he said, that I don't care how many children I have, but Lord, don't give me none until after I get, get through this depression and I got some money. <laughs> Because I can't stand it if I got a bunch of children and ain't got nothing to feed them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 God bless you. I, I appreciate you giving me this insight. Uh, well, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. When the day came for Bishop Lawson to leave and go to glory, I wasn't there. I wanted to be with him when he died, but I wasn't. There was a minister I w that was there when he died, and this minister said to me, I know I got Bishop Lawson's blessing because I was there when he died. I didn't say anything to the minister because I knew he didn't receive Bishop Lawson's blessings. And I knew he didn't because I knew the man, I knew the person who hadn't raised a finger to serve Bishop Lawson. And I knew there could be no blessing coming to an individual who could not serve another, or who did not serve another. There was something about serving, about helping and laboring and toiling that makes the difference, not just asking for a blessing. But what have you done to receive what you are asking for? Therefore, a man looking to be blessed by a man of God need to render services to the kingdom of God in serving the individual. This is not wrong. This is right. All new ministers need to readjust their perception of life. For they look for their blessings to come through some academic area of life, through their schooling, through their educational qualifications. All of this is wonderful, to be academically equipped, to be a good, intelligent, informed preacher, but ministers who depend on the academic knowledge for the blessings that they need to get through this life will fall because they have nothing spiritual. What keeps a man in the channel 
to be blessed. In the line of blessing is his, his humility and his submission and obedience to another person, a person that has the power to bless him. So though you might have the academic knowledge, you still need to serve another and be blessed by that other person. Or else, that individual will eventually fall, and I've seen this happen not one time, but many times. We have many backslidden ministers today in the world of apostolicism. Their cause for serving another makes a man humble. Serving another humbles the man so that God can talk to the individual and bless the individual. Yes, I served the great, wonderful Bishop R.C. Lawson, my father in the gospel. I served him because he was that kind of a man that I felt God was using, God was blessing, God was transforming his life to transform the lives of others. And I saw this. God used him as a prophet, as a teacher, as an evangelist. The gifts was immense. God gave him the gift of healing, the gift of discernment. I saw in him all of the gifts. He was a tremendous personality. He was a tremendous man. He was a tremendous force in his lifetime. I will always cherish the fact that I was chosen to succeed him in the pastorage of that great church, Refuge Temple, his church that he started and preached out. I am the second pastor. He was the first. I have tried to add to what he left to give dignity because I have felt that I owed him something and I wanted to pay my debt to whom I committed myself on one occasion when I saw him crying because of the split that had come in the organization. His heart was broken and I said to him, don't cry. When the day comes that you too old and frail to walk, use my legs. And when your eyes have grown dim, use my eyes. And when your mouth is not able to utter, use my mouth. I meant this with all my heart, and until the day I die, I want to pursue the course of repayment of a debt that I owe my father in the gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop R. C. Lawson. St. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved.